Hi, everyone. Paul Bertarelli for AvWeb in the Zoom window. On the other side is Tina Tomazic of Pipistrel Vertical Solutions. In case you don't know it, uh, Pipistrel is based in Slovenia and is the only company, as far as I know, to be actually selling electric airplanes, and they've sold quite a few. Uh, this week, we reported that Pipistrel announced a new hybrid uh, electric cargo aircraft called the Nuva V300, and here's what it looks like. Uh, Tina, I visited you in Slovenia last summer, and you hinted at this aircraft, and now here it is uh, in concept, if not in the actual flesh. Hybrid drive for this aircraft. Run us through the logic uh, that got you to hybrid on this, on this particular airplane. Yeah, so um, it's pretty much public knowledge that uh, Pipistrel is involved in eVTOL developments uh, on various fronts. I mean, we did unveil our vision of the design for the Uber Air Taxi uh, last year in June at the Uber Elevate conference in Washington. And I want to point out that Nuva V300 is, is not uh, coming from that product. It, it always has been a parallel product, which is serving different needs, and it's also designed um, around different parameters. Uh, the look and feel of the aeroplane, so the, the tandem wing design, the open rotors, uh, eight rotors and, uh, and a pusher propeller uh, with a hybrid powertrain, basically comes out of um, an interesting fact that while uh, some air taxi uh, operations may be really, really sensitive to noise and comfort and, and other things, when it comes to moving cargo and the logistics segments, it's all about dependability, uh, where you can reach as well as what's your cost of operation. And it usually comes down to how cheaply can you transport a ton of cargo over a mile. So uh, Nuva V300 is uh, able to take off and land with uh, failure tolerance at a much higher elevations than the air taxis. You know, there's uh, not too many uh, urban centers uh, above 6,000 feet pressure or 8,000 feet density. Uh, Nuva pushes this up to uh, 8,500 feet pressure. So essentially you could be supplying a mountain huts type of situations or, or places in the outreach where cargo also needs to go and maybe these locations are not as lucrative for on-demand passenger traffic. And uh, every, system, every single system on the vehicle is uh, subject to cost optimization. And uh, also the durability of the vehicle plays a big, big role. So um, this is uh, our other design direction. We are not neglecting the air taxi market. However, at the moment we are prioritizing uh, entry into service of, of the Nuva uh, eVTOL uh, family for cargo and logistics. Uh, the big difference is also this is a completely unmanned uh, aircraft, whereas the air taxi that uh, we are considering is, is a piloted vehicle. Now it's significant uh to those who haven't followed this, or maybe even those who have, that uh, this aircraft has wings. Uh, and how much, how much lift uh, in, in typical cruise flight is coming from those wings? Because uh, we, we all know that the limitation of vertical flight is uh, if, if the rotors are delivering all the lift, uh, then you have battery power limitations. So how does this address that? Uh, so during cruise or during, let's say, distance covering uh, on the Nuva, all of the lift comes from the wing. Uh, the eight rotors, which are there to serve uh, the vertical lift portion, so the arrivals and departures, uh, are in fact not operating at all. Uh, wing is an incredible lift amplifier, uh, so it, it, it really boosts up the efficiency. Um, also, the mission segments that we are addressing with Nuva are, are long distance missions. Uh, the name V300 comes from the fact that uh, the sweet spot of this vehicle is what we call the double 300. Uh, about 300 kg, so give or take 700 pounds of payload, over a 300 kilometer range, which is some 180 miles. Uh, this is where the cost of operation is, is optimized. Uh, it can push the payload capability up to 1,000 pounds or even slightly more when the distance is some 50 to 60 miles. Um, or it can fly almost, you know, I think it's 1,500 nautical miles, so far, far away, uh, with a payload that's 100 pounds or less. So it's, it's a very flexible machine, but uh, we think it will be used on the medium distances, so not cross-continental or, or really long distance. But it is still able to cover considerably longer distances than a multi-copter design or an all-electric vehicle with today's technology. So Nuva V300 may at some point be completely electrically driven, uh, but uh, in order to achieve interesting cost of operation and practicality over considerable distances, you know, a few hundreds of miles, uh, with uh, 
relatively a lot of cargo, kind of like what you can put in a, in a delivery van if you are a logistics company. Um, the hybrid propulsion system uh, is for the foreseeable future, at least next uh, five to 10 years, uh, the best option for, uh, and for a quick entry into service and reliable operation. Also, it makes the vehicle uh, less independent on the infrastructure. So you do not require an electric recharge at every location since uh, the cargo deliveries are not as scheduled. It's not uh, like, uh, as an example, an Uber Elevate network where you have vertiports at fixed locations inside cities or near the cities. So you'd be able to kind of guess a little bit where your next destination is. Uh, Nuva, in fact, can land on any heliport uh, or a heliport sized, even unpre unprepared terrain. Uh, that does not need to be equipped with a particular infrastructure at all. So as I understand this correctly, uh, and looking at the design, th this vehicle would take off uh, vertically uh, and run those uh, eight rotors for only a few minutes before transitioning, uh, transitioning to the hybrid system for, for forward yeah, flight. Yeah, in fact, uh, the, the whole arri arrival and departure um, sequence is less than two minutes on, on each end. Um, if the weather is favorable, so winds below 10 knots or so, it could even be as short as one minute and you are operating at, in the cruise regime, basically as a, as a winged aeroplane, uh, not as a, as a powered lift platform. And w what kind of uh, uh, speed and altitude would this operate at? The, the vehicle was designed to give uh, really a lot of flexibility. Uh, the ceiling is flight level 200. So this is service operatable ceiling with uh, 300 kg of payload. So you could, you could fly very high for efficiency, long distance if the airspace permits. Um, in terms of speeds, it's approximately a 120 knot true airspeed airplane when it cruises. Uh, slightly faster if it's higher, slightly lower if it's near the sea level, but give or take general aviation airspeeds. Um, yeah. Now, uh, I assume that the, um, the hybrid drive is a, a conventional piston engine uh, uh, driving a, a generator setup? So we will not cover the exact details of the architecture, but in fact, there is a combustion engine um, on the vehicle which can run on a multitude of fuels, uh, non-heavy fuels uh, at the moment. Uh, that works in combination with uh, eight electric uh, powertrains engines, uh, which are already showcased in our Velis Electro. Um, and uh, there's different combinations of, of operation to handle different failure modes. Um, but yeah, this is where the, the hybrid term comes from. And when would you expect uh, initial revenue service for something like this? Well, if one uh, would be content with operating under a specific operational approval, so not basically waiting until uh, the vehicle can be universally deployed, but um, maybe identifying an, an area of interest, uh, a geographically limited area of interest where operations could happen, uh, it could be as fast as 2023. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll put on my calendar another trip to Slovenia there, so I expect to see a demonstration. Yeah, no seats on this airplane, but uh, you are welcome to join us <laughs> during the flight. We can probably do it virtually. <laughs> I was just trying to say that I hope that by, by that time, uh, the whole necessity of doing everything virtually kind of uh, goes away and uh, we can return also to, to more pleasurable face-to-face -face, uh, meetups and, and experiences. That's two of us. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. We've been speaking with uh, Tina Tomzik of uh, Pipistrel Vertical Solutions. Thanks for watching.